Rush babies. I am a Rush baby. You may be a Rush baby. If you're watching this show, odds are you are actually a Rush baby or you had a Rush baby and raised a Rush baby. What is a Rush baby? This is a term for a generational group held together by an era in which they grew up, the cultural forces in society that imprinted an entire generation. Like the baby boomers or Gen X or millennials, the Rush babies were raised with a single driving common factor. We listened to or were forced to listen to Rush Limbaugh. Raise your hand right now if you know car rides to middle school sports practices, well, family road trips, or your dad's garage permanently had the iconic gravelly bellowing voice of Rush Limbaugh rolling through the speaker. If your hand just went up, you are indeed a Rush baby. It's a phenomenon. There are multi-millions of us. Rush Limbaugh was the voice of our youth. Never has a generation defined so powerfully by a cultural figure. Be proud if you're a Rush baby. You had the best upbringing. You know what talent on loan from God truly means. Not what AOC thinks it means. She thinks it's her. She thinks she is on loan from God. Or what Eric Swalwell thinks it means. Eric Swalwell actually misgendered God this week. Did you know that? He believed the challenge was a jurisdictional one. So we could have called God herself and the Republicans weren't going to be willing to convict. Good job, Eric. That is the most embarrassing thing Eric Swalwell has done since defecating live on television in his own pants. The evidence is uncontradicted that the president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat an election. Mm, that's tough. Pooping in their own pants is something that Democrats often did when they heard the name Rush Limbaugh. In passing this week, the conservative movement lost a North Star, a titan who won majorities for Republicans in both chambers. Did you know that Rush Limbaugh was made an honorary member of the House in 1994 when Republicans won back that chamber for the first time in a generation? No one man in American history has single-handedly done more to turn hearts and minds of a nation toward freedom. He was America's spokesman, the distillation of the American dream, but it did not used to be that way. His cigar-chomping golden microphone bravado had humble beginnings. Rush was born in small-town rural Missouri. He was raised to be a patriot by his hard-driving World War II fighter pilot father. According to his teachers, Rush flunked every single subject. He was a failure, but enamored with a single activity, radio. In February 1971, 20-year-old Limbaugh dropped out of college and accepted an offer to DJ at a local radio station. Limbaugh moved around from station to station, but flourished at a political talk radio station in Sacramento, California in the 1980s. Rush's talent caught the attention of ABC in New York, and he started a show with WABC, which remained his flagship station for years. As his show was eventually being broadcast to more than 650 radio stations nationwide, the most listened to man in the world continued on a 30-year romp, dominance at the top of the chart. The day after Rush announced tragically that he was diagnosed with advanced lung cancer, President Trump presented him with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. That moment is worth remembering. I am proud to announce tonight that you will be receiving our country's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. beautiful moment. I was honored to be in the room when that actually happened. The audience at the Student Action Summit, Turning Point USA's largest conference, packed, was packed with Rush babies in 2019. I was also there. Rush Limbaugh was introducing President Donald Trump to a standing room only crowd of students as far as the eye could see. They were in an arena in West Palm Beach and the atmosphere was electric, like a rock concert. And the rock star was Rush Limbaugh. Molar rattling anthemic music pulsated through the convention hall as I walked backstage. I had been invited to meet Rush Limbaugh. There he was, sitting humbly, quietly, alone in a corner of a room. I approached Rush and held out my hand. His voice rung clear as a bell, the gravelly bellowing, hi, 
I'm Rush, was unmistakable. It was chilling to hear that voice in person. Intimidated and in awe, I told Rush the most true thing I could say. You are the voice of my childhood. Driving through Iowa cornfields to football practice, cross country, never ending family vacations, summer days mowing the lawn. Never was there an afternoon when that golden voice was not echoing through the Johnson household. Rush laughed, he looked at the floor, and he said, young man, you have no idea how many times I've been told that. Every person I meet between the ages of 14 to 40 tells me the same thing. Rush continued, you know, it's an honor. Some of those kids had no parents. They were from broken homes. They tell me I raised them like a godfather, like a godfather to an entire generation of young Americans. Rush stopped, he smiled, he leaned back in his chair. He kind of looked on proudly. That was the last thing he said to me, the only thing I ever said to Rush Limbaugh. It had a profound effect on me. Rush never had any biological children, but Rush was a father all the same. Rush was the father of an entire movement, a godfather to an entire generation of patriots. He raised us. It is our duty to practice what he taught us, to love our country, our freedoms, and our fellow patriots. Listen. So we've become a country of nothing but a bunch of victims, constantly angry, demanding that somebody do something about it, instead of all of us, as we used to do, using self-reliance and our own initiative and our guts and handling life ourselves. The golden microphone is at the golden gates now. Let's, as a generation, make Rush proud. Joining me now, the reason I listened to Rush Limbaugh in my childhood, my parents, Dana and Howard Johnson. Guys, thank you so much for being on the Benny Report. Well, thanks for having hey, thanks, us. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> okay, so tough booking here. Why did you play Rush Limbaugh for me constantly as a kid? Well, I did it because when we lived in rural Iowa, um, he had the sentiment that we believed in, and he finally gave a voice to us. Uh, living out in the sticks in Shueyville, Iowa. So I loved he put words to to the things that we were thinking and believing. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of gave credence and uh, a foundation for us. Uh, and he had a little bit of humor. He had a side humor that was, you know, very, very endearing. As I speak with people of my own age in the conservative movement, we all have the same stories. We're Rush babies. It's an entire generational thing. We grew up listening to Rush Limbaugh because your generation played him for us on the radio. Did you know you were affecting so profoundly uh, the next young generation of conservatives? Oh, it was all by design, Ben. We knew you, we knew you would be where you are today, so yes. <laughs> We knew it'd be a big influence. What was it about Rush that initially attracted you? Because if you're going to play something, I'm a father now, if you're going to play media for your child, this is obviously something you're going to care deeply about and you have to believe in it. What was it that attracted you about Rush and caused so many people in your generation to turn on the dial seemingly 24 hours a day to Rush Limbaugh for their kids? Not only did he speak to what we believed in and... and uh, he stated it so profoundly, but he had humor with it. And the humor was awfully fun. He had the uh, Paul Shanklin, <laughs> and he would play some of those funny parodies. Yep. And it was it was just a delight where you look forward to listening to him from one to three every day. He was one of the first guys to point out that uh, Bill Clinton had friends in all the Asian places. And so, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun listening to him. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for teaching me how to live life with half my brain tied behind my back. Too bad none of that humor actually passed on to me. We're trying, though, guys. Thank you so much, hey. Mom and Dad, for being on The Benny Report. Take care, son. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll, we'll, see. we'll see if Mom and Dad become a regular guest.